Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as in doers of God's Word, with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaren. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening and welcome to our midweek service. It's good to be here again teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. I believe you had a wonderful week and God has been faithful to each and every one of us. No doubt. We are in the season of fasting and praying and no doubt God has been answering our prayers. I believe each and every one of us is fasting. If you are yet to be fasting, I want to encourage you to please join us. Because there are some things in our life that will not happen except through divine intervention. And we need fasting and praying to push through. So please join us for the last few days and I believe God will open doors unto you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We have been looking at the subject of wisdom for our teaching series for the month of February. And I believe you are having a good time. Today we are looking at the concluding part of the series of teaching on wisdom for daily living. And we are looking at the subject of the power of consistency and commitment. In this day and age, our world seems to lack perseverance through difficult times. When you have a stressful job or a boring job, we are quick to change it. When our marriages or our relationships seems to be going awire, we want uh, out, out of it. We are looking for divorce. We are looking for separation. So consistency seems to be lacking. And consistency and commitment is a key ingredient to getting the reality of our vision. And I'm believing God that God will help us and will open our eyes to understand that the power of consistency and commitment in the precious name of Jesus Christ. There's no instant gratification to some investments that we make in life. But through consistency, we can begin to realize and actualize those investments that we make and therefore be able to reap the reward. The Bible says we shall reap the reward in due season if we faint not. And I'm praying that God will give us the grace as we are waiting upon him and our strength will be renewed and we have the power to persevere through every hardship of life and at the end of the day we can be able to say thus far as the Lord helped us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I'm believing God tonight that he will speak to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you very very much for thus far you have helped us this month of February. Thank you, Lord, for our strength that has been renewed through fasting and praying. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and being our God and showing yourself strong on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. We give you all the glory. Father, as we sit, it, sit at your feet to listen to your word tonight, please open our eyes of understanding, reveal your word unto us. Teach us, O oh Lord, my Lord, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Give me clarity of thought, eloquence your speech to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I believe strongly that consistency and commitment is what it takes for us to strike gold in life. The two go hand in hand, whether it be in our finances, in our relationship, in our spiritual maturity, in our physical fitness. Consistency is the best route to take there. We have to be consistent in our Bible study, in our thought pattern, in our conduct, so that the world will know that we are truly the sons of the living God. When we talk about consistency, we can have it synonymous with some words like reliability, dependability, um, trustworthy, faithful, someone that persevere. When you are consistent, you are a man that is focused or a woman that is focused. Bible says a double-minded man would not receive anything of the Lord because he's unstable in all of his ways. James chapter 1 verse 8. So in this day and age where everybody goes towards the highest bidder, it's difficult to find men of integrity, men of focus, men that are going to be consistent in their action and reaction and then be able to actualize what they are looking for. I'm believing that God will help each and every one of us to be consistent in our way of life. But sadly, you see, even in the secular and the spiritual world, there's inconsistency. In the spiritual world, when um, something takes place within the church, in the, within the body of Christ, believers are so quick to jump and um, into a different ministry or go into a different church because they believe, well, if there's a problem there, I will find my square root. 
But you see, God is looking for people who will stand the test of time. Because those people are those who can commit real wealth or real um, responsibility in their hands. A man is, who is not consistent will be disloyal. And if you're disloyal, that means that you will sell yourself to the highest bidder. And I'm praying that God will help us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Consistency pays off, but we frequently neglect it. Because the, the dividend of it does not come as quickly as we want it. So, we must learn to understand what consistency entails so that we can begin to practice it as a way of life if you're not already doing so. And then if you're already doing so, increase the tempo so that we can get to our destination a lot quicker. I believe each and every one of us wants to fulfill destiny. And you shall surely get there in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We have to be consistent in our ways of life. But let me say this, every one of us will go through pressure. That's just the bottom line truth. Every one of us will go through pressure. Our inconsistency reveals that the truth of God's word or Jesus has not penetrated some areas of our life. That's why many of us are spiritually derailed. And we have to be focused. We need a great awakening as Christians. And I'm praying that God will help us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Pressures of life can be used for our advantage. Remember what the words of Paul says in the books of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 and 9. He said, We are at press on every side, but we are not crushed, perplexed, but not despaired, prosecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Life pressures and events of everyday living sometimes wants to draw us away from our focus, but we must not allow it. Life is filled with every minute with some kind of um, distraction that can lure us away, but we must not allow it. Pressures of life can be used for our advantages. And for example, we can actually use it to clarify our priorities because somehow, some way, we work better under pressure. So we can use pressures to focus our life, sharpen our vision, and create uh, simplicity in our lives so that we can be determined to get to the very best of life for our life. I'm believing that God will help us, each and every one of us, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So, we cannot do this or get to the zenith of life without being consistent. And it gives me great pleasure to share with us some reason I believe so strongly that we need commitment and we need consistency in our lives. Number one, life is a process. Believe me, everybody will grow through seasons of challenges. That is the bottom line truth. The best faith preachers, the biggest pastors, the archbishops, the bishops, every one of them will tell you they have a story behind their glory. So life is a process. And therefore, we should not abandon our effort halfway because we can't see result yet. I'm saying this to us because many of us sometimes are pressed on every side and we feel that we should just quit and throw in the towel. Now, if you read the books of Mark chapter 4, verse 28, the Bible says there, it says, All by itself the soil produced grain. You see, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. In other words, there's a process, there's a stage through which fruit is produced and harvest is reaped. But if, you're, if you abandon your investment while the, the seed is still in the ground germinating, you will fail to reap the harvest when the time for harvest comes. I'm praying that God will help each and every one of us because life will take you through certain valleys and sometimes you have some irrelevant steps you have to take. But believe me, every one of those steps will add up. So don't fail and don't give up because you cannot see the things that you'd expect yet. The season of life has transition. You will go from faces to faces. And I'm praying that God will help us so that we can be able to manage each phase of our life and be able to actualize our dreams. You see, without God taking us through those phases, we cannot develop growth. Our minds will be um, feeble and will not be strong enough to undo the poisonous tongues of men that will come our way. You know, I look at myself now when I look at people say things about me or people um, react at me in certain ways. And I smile and I say, praise God. And I say, God bless you. 
That's because in the time past, I've gone through situations and phases of life where I've learned to persevere through hardship and through things that might seem almost impossible to overcome. But thank God that he has given me the grace to overcome it all. And when I look at situations of life now and I smile and people are sharing their um, challenges with me, I can honestly say, you know, God is faithful and he will get you through it because I've been through it all. And surely you will also get through it as well. You see, those life situations help us determine our focus and help us keep our spirit alive so that we would not wader, uh, sorry, waver under the load of glory. And I'm believing that the weight of glory that will visit you this year, you will not crumble under it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number two, our investment would not reach maturity if we are not committed to it. Now, permit me to share the story of the bamboo tree with you. Now, the bamboo tree is a tree that takes several years to grow. Now, as a farmer that is planting bamboo trees, you have to wet the ground for over four years before you actually see anything come out of the ground. The first year, nothing comes out of the ground. The second year, nothing comes out of the ground. The third year, fourth year. But when it begins to shoot out of the ground, within six weeks, the bamboo tree can reach up to 60 feet in the air. That is the miracle of the bamboo tree. So when we are investing now and we can see no result, a time is coming that you will shoot above your peers to assume that have gone ahead of you. The most important thing is that you persevere through the hard times and you stay focused on your investment so that it reaches maturity. Do not eat your fruit green or unripen because it will take sour in your mouth. And I'm believing that God will give us the grace to persevere through it all. Every one of us have invested, whether in our studying, whether in our education. I remember some years ago when we were still in school, doing the first degree. There were people who started this um, the degree with us. And then they got to the second year and they said, I'm not doing it any longer. And they quit. And today, many of us are working in different places or in a large establishment and multinational companies, but they're yet to find their feet in. Or their feet in the world because they have refused to persevere through the hard times i'm praying that god will help you in the precious name of jesus christ it takes perseverance and commitment to enter into our commit uh, into our inheritance in god and i'm saying that each and every one of us has something in us that is desperate to come out that is our destiny and it takes great perseverance, great commitment, great consistency in our daily work and action to get us to the zenith of life. Number three, somebody is taking note. I've wondered for many years how David got recommended. David, the, the psalmist, the King David in the Bible, how he got recommended to come and play before the king. If you read the story in the books of um, 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 14 to 20, you discover that somebody with the, among the king's court recommended that David come and play before the king's sword when the spirit of God departed from him and the evil spirit began to torment him. What am I saying to you? Somebody some way is taking note of your consistency. Somebody some way is taking note of your commitment. Believe me, you'll be so shocked somebody that will write recommendation about your life and recommendation for you. Every one of us need destiny helpers. But before the destiny helper can put his, put his neck on the line for you, he must say something in you that he believes is worthwhile. And this is demonstrated through our commitment and our focus and our consistency. I'm believing that God will help us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Consistency helps us, whether it be in our finances, um, finances whether it be in our marital life or in our spiritual life. You see, credit card companies can take advantage of you when you're undisciplined. Because to be consistent, you have to be disciplined. In our finances, if we are not consistent, we are not disciplined, and therefore we get ourselves into trouble. In our marital life, if we are not disciplined and consistent, we will get ourselves in trouble. So somebody somewhere is taking note. And you will not miss your opportunity in life to get to the high place in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Consistency makes concrete commitments. Anybody that is consistent, you will find out that they keep to their agreement. Regardless, 
they stay focused on what they have said. But many of us are not willing to be patient enough for the due season. And this has allowed the devil to give us a bait that lures us away or hooks us into trouble. We have to stay committed. We have to stay, um, stay focused on the goals ahead of us. This is the only way we can actualize the vision of, a go of God for our life in 2015. We have to strive to see the vision fulfilled. And this will take perseverance. It will take commitment. It will take consistency. And this can only be done through the help of the Holy Spirit. Number four, we are soldiers in God's army. You've heard me say it humorously in the past that the day you gave your life to Jesus, truly you have, started, you have signed your life as a soldier of Christ. And as a soldier of Christ, our main duty is to please our commander-in-chief, which is Jesus. And for us to do that, we must stay focused. We must persevere through hardship. We must not entangle our lives with civilian matters any longer. The Bible says, like good soldiers, endure hardship. And we must be able to endure it so that we can see victory at the end of the day. And when we get to the zenith of life, we can say, do as far as the Lord helped us. I'm believing God that each and every one of us will stay focused in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's deal with how we can stay committed and how we can be consistent. Knowledge must be practical for it to be useful. A few lessons that we can learn from the life of Elijah, the prophet, is that Elijah refused to be distracted. Many people are distracted in this day and age. If you read the story in the books of 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 1 to 13, he knew his master was going to be taken. His master told him oh, about three times to stay somewhere. He said, no, as, Lord, as long as the Lord God of heaven leave it, I will not leave you because there's something in you that I want that is double portion of your spirit. You see, Every one of us, there's something that we have to focus on. There's something that we have to, you see, occupy our mind in totality so that we don't ever lose focus. Let me say something to you. Many people have great calling on their lives. They have great, um, um, I would say, great destinies that God has given, for, uh, given to them. But because they are too distracted, in life, he has allowed the devil to steal time away from them and they are now panicking during their midlife because they are looking at the time they have left in comparison to the vision they have and they can see that there's not enough time to complete it. When we began the ministry, even people I thought to be spiritual fathers said to me, I've, I've carried my calling on my head too much. Thank, thank God for a man of God, a spiritual father that said to me, he says, son, if they told me that you carried women on your head or you carried uh, money on your head, I'll be worried. But because they are saying you carry your ministry on your head and you're calling on your head, I'm so happy. And I'm thanking God for your life because it shows that you're, you refuse to be distracted in this season where everybody, every young man, every young woman is being distracted with the things of the world. So we must be focused and we must not be distracted. And Elijah, so like Elisha, we must have a sense of destiny and we must be dedicated to our calling. And your calling might not be in ministry, it might be in industry, but whatever you are called to do, stay focused on it because surely it will come and it will speak at the end. The vision is for an appointed time. In due season, you shall reap your reward in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number two, those who are consistent must be consistent in their character. You see, many people have um, spoiled their good name through politics. Many people go for the highest bidder. Their, the allegiance of their heart is towards the highest bidder. Who is your allegiance towards? Let me ask that question. Is it to Christ or to whosoever brings the highest money? It takes obedience to the word of God to open the door of spiritual consistency. You must be consistent in your spiritual work, in your life, in your words, in your action, your reaction. Because you see, somebody is taking note somewhere. Our heart must be committed to holy living. 
it must be fueled by love and focus towards God. Have faith in God that what he has said will not fall to the ground, but it shall fulfill what he has been sent to do. Number three, cast your burden upon God. Like I said earlier, everybody will go through pressure of life. We will all face something that is challenging. But once you cast your burden upon him, ask for the help of the Holy Spirit, it will surely help you. Pray in all situations. Bible says pray without ceasing. Don't trust in your own strength because your strength will fail you. The Bible says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. But we shall remember the name of our God. Psalms 20 verse 7. So let your heart be focused on God and God alone. Number four, watch the friend that you keep. Iron sharpened iron, a man's countenance sharpened out of his friend. And evil communication corrupt good manners. What fellowship does light have to do with darkness? You see, many times we see the wicked prosper in their ways and also he wants to tempt us to cut corners. But let me advise us, don't. Believe me, the wealth of the wicked will not last. But the Bible says a good man leaves inheritance for his children and his children's children. When you go through the way of consistency and commitment, the wealth and the future or the life that you build will outlive you because the good name that you have built will be passed on to your children and your children's children and people will know you and remember you for good. I can share that with you in the life of my biological father. The good name that he has left is now speaking in our life as children and surely it will speak in the life of my children also in the precious name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to close, what are the benefits of consistency and living a life of focus and commitment? One of the key ones is that we live a life of triumph over every adversity, over every ad, um, adversary. Remember, when the law, a man's way pleases God, he will cause his enemy to be at peace with him. Um, Proverbs 16, verse 7. So when our ways, where, where we are committed, which is pleasing unto the Lord, is shown, surely the Lord God of heaven that sees us will stand by us. Consistency, number two, is the key to growth. Many people want to mature in their faith. Many people are asking God for more power. They are asking God for more anointing. But are you consistent with what he has given you? Are you committed to this work? Consistency is what leads to maturity in your spiritual work. Number three, consistency and commitment brings orderliness to our lives. Our life is less stressful because we have self-discipline which increases peace, joy, and confidence. Number four, consistency and commitment brings about productivity. A well-planned life is always fruitful. A consistent life is always fruitful. You see, because the fruit keep coming at a steady pace, not somebody that is, is um, feast, uh, feasting today and the next day there's famine in his life. And number four, our, finally, or number five, is that we have an eternal reward. We must have God's perspective on matters. Rely on God's promises, for his promises will never fail. Surely it will speak. The vision is for an appointed time. I'm believing that in this series of teaching, you have learned one or two things, or one of two skill or wisdom that will help us build the vision of God for our life in 2015. Are you a committed Christian? Are you a consistent person? Are you committed in your ways? There are many things and many factors of life that can distract us, but we must not allow it. One of the underutilized personalities in the body of Christ is the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage us today to begin to ask help from the Holy Spirit in all that we do. Because it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. And I'm believing that God will help us to accomplish all that He has set before us. Discipline, not desire, is what brings get us to our destination. Is what gets our vision completed. Is what gets us focused to do all that God has sent us to do. And I'm believing that God will help us accomplish everything he has placed before us this year, 2015, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. God be with you in Jesus' precious name. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you very much for your word as comfort with power and life today. Thank you, Lord, because you're the one who has spoken to us this month on wisdom. And I'm praying that your wisdom shall fill us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We shall never be lacking in wisdom to accomplish all that you have placed before us to do in this year 2015. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
And I pray, my Lord and my God, that your Holy Spirit shall be in us. We shall be super sensitive to this leading at all time in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for thus far you have helped us this month. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.